on the agenda um, are the consent items, and that is the approval of the minutes from the May 23rd uh, regular board meeting and approval of the minutes from the June 7th study session. Are there any questions or concerns about either of those? I have a question, and my memory may fail me because that's totally possible. But on our study session, Joe Murphy was here, right? Didn't we have everybody? Or did we not? He did, and, and Joe here. left early. Yeah. Joe had to leave early for baseball. Yeah. But he was here for the study session, right? right? He's not listed as present, so we'll need that'll have to be. Yeah, I think he left at 630. Yeah, he had to go because he had volume. That's right. But I thought that he, he was here for the most majority Thank of the Jenny, your memory's better than mine. Well, <coughs> I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I forgot that, but that was the only thing I noticed. Any other questions or comments from the board? Questions or comments from the from the gallery? Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the May 23rd, uh, 2022 regular session and approve the minutes of the June 7th, 2022 study session. So moved. Second. You, Kyle and Tom. All in favor? Motion passes five to zero. Todd, how about a funds report? Report for the education fund um, through the end of May. Um, in May, we had uh, we had uh, receipts of nine hundred seventy-one thousand nine hundred fifty-two dollars and twenty-seven cents. We had expenses of one million two hundred ten thousand four hundred forty-two dollars and four cents. Our cash balance at the end of May in the education fund is nine hundred ninety-two thousand eight hundred sixty-three dollars and fifty-five cents. Debt service fund, we have receipts of $8,782.41 and expenses of $3,250, leaving us the cash balance at the end of May of $1,008,449.73. And the operations fund, we have receipts of $11,213.27. Um, Expenses of $289,427.98. Our cash balance in the operations fund at the end of May is $440,824.47. Any questions from the board? Um, Todd, for the education fund, just double checking the extra Four hundred thousand dollars in expenses would be a three pay period month. It was actually um, catch up from health insurance, um, pulling it into the transfers that we do each month from fund to um, self insurance fund. The operations fund to self insurance fund. We had done that since March, and so we were able to, we were able to do some catch up in May. So, so that was yep. more significant. That yeah. looks like year over year, we're still mm -hmm. up in that fund. Okay, is June a three pay period month then? July is a three period. July, okay. Yes, July so month month. Month. Okay. Because it was about um, the amount of a payroll, that's yeah, what I was curious, yeah. but that's not what it was. And, okay. May, and, and June will show that as that, that catch up was March and April, so June will do May and June will be caught up. So everything will be back to normal. Just in time for a three pay month in July. Do you anticipate that year over year it will still stay positive of where yes. it was last year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm assuming last year in um, for the debt service and operations that we must have had our payment for our local uh, taxes our, early or in yes, May. Yes, we received our disbursement unusually early last year. It was the last week of May, so we okay. just received them. I think it was last Monday. I noticed it was in account so we, we have received them for the June disbursement but last year it was early okay. so then it will probably year over year be mm -hmm. similar to what that yeah. is okay thank you okay claims uh, claims um, with board approval tonight um, 
the, the amount of $1,521,822.74. <coughs> payroll, three payrolls uh, for approval. May 20th for $504,012.63. June 3rd for $491,992.70. And June 17th for $438,040.39. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? Any questions from any, anyone else? Okay. Uh, at this time, we'll entertain a, a motion to approve the funds report, the claims report, and the approval of the payrolls. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Okay. All in favor? Motion passes five to zero. Moving on to donations. Were there any donations added today? There were not. Thank you. I just wanted to double check before I start. Uh, for Riddle Elementary School, $500 for one book, one school from the Rotary Club. <coughs> Excuse me. Riddle, Riddle Elementary, $500, one book, one school from the Optimist Club of Rochester. Columbia Elementary, $500 for textbook assistance from an anonymous donation. Riddle Elementary, $500 textbook assistance from an anonymous donation. Columbia Elementary, Roz Puppet Show from Sai to Zai. Tell me what a Roz Puppet Show is. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> was it a convocation you had? No, we're going to have it. It's for next year. We've okay. set it up. Um, they, they come just periodically. And I mean, it's puppets, great for the younger kids, um, messages that all correlate to uh, our character education. Great, so. great. Thank you. And thank you. Sorry, it was I. Uh, Riddle Elementary, Treats and Granola Bars, uh, Charlie Schwank. And Riddle Elementary, two 31 gift bags for PE equipment from Charlie Schwank. And uh, again, we appreciate the donations and um, the one book, one school has been a big hit with the kids and with the community and uh, textbook assistance is always appreciated. Uh, it, it gets tough. The puppet show sounds like a great thing and uh, Charlie very generously donated those items to uh, Riddle. So uh, thank you to all of you. Um, we have a motion to approve the donations. So, Casey? Second. And Jenny? And all in favor? <coughs> Motion passes five to zero. Right. Action items. Approval of changes in the Rochester High School handbook for the 2022-2023 school year. Uh, Mr. Haas met with us at the uh, study session and went over the details on that. Um, I think the biggest change is that uh, the backpacks, is that correct, Oscar? Yes, so the two big changes are uh, removing work permits because the state uh, does not require those anymore. And then, so we are not going to allow backpacks to be carried throughout the school starting at the beginning of the year next year. Those are the two big changes. Other changes were just the things that or wording that we need to get updated in the handbook. Okay. And when you say throughout the school, that's going to be 8 through 12, correct? Yes, 8 through 12. Thank you. Just for clarification. Um, any questions on uh, those handbook changes? Any questions from the community? Okay, I will entertain a, a motion for that. So for, to, I, I'm sorry, Jenny told me once I have to state these things. <laughs> for, the, for the changes to the high school handbook for 2022-23. Moved by Kyle. Second. And seconded by Casey. All in favor? Motion passes, five to zero. 
Next item, approve the math textbook adoption for Rochester High School 2022-2023 school year. Any comments, Mr. Haas? <clears throat> yes, we have a committee that consisted of all our math teachers, Ron and Isaac Schaefer, Terry Street and Sean Kelly and Steve Freeman. And then we had the board member of Kyle Rinsberger and the parent, Chad Thomas. We had three textbook companies to look at. The teachers narrowed it down to two before they brought the committee together. And uh, they ended up falling on Reveal Math through McGraw Hill. That also, uh, that quote that we have provided includes our fee for Alex, which was it used to be an additional fee for our students. So Alex Math uh, comes with that uh, concept of Reveal Math that our teachers uh, decided they really liked. And it was based on our curriculum mapping and all that we've done with our curriculum directors, and they were a huge help as well. Thank you, Oscar. Mm -hmm. Did you have something on it? No, that was going to be my point of clarification. I wanted to make sure that, that he mentioned that the curriculum directors helped map that out, uh, helped the, lead them through that, and make sure that the books that we're um, proposing met all of those uh, qualifications that we were looking for. Great. Thank you. Any questions or concerns about the math textbook adoption? Community? Okay. Uh, I'll accept a motion to approve the um, math textbook adoption for Rochester High School for the 2022-2023 school year. So moved. Thank you, Doug. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. All in favor? Motion carries five to zero. Approval of the Rochester High School rental fees for the 2022-2023 school year. I assume this is textbook rental? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Anything you need to say about that? Uh, the big change was the math book textbook <laughs> fee, and those actually went down because we only like get classroom sets of the hardbacks now, and they're digital copies. So it'll be a little bit cheaper for parents and students in regards to math. Everybody's always glad to hear that. <laughs> it's rare. <laughs> All right, uh, any questions from the board? Anything from the community? I'll accept a motion to approve the Rochester High School rental fees for the 2022-2023 school year. So moved. Oh good, Jenny and Casey. All right. <laughs> and all in favor? Motion carries five to zero. And I got a school. Approval of the Rochester Community School Corporation daycare for corporation employees. Jason, uh, you passed out these handouts. Is there anything you would like to share with us? No. If I, I, if, if, I, if I may, before we get started, I want to give a personal shout out to both Jason and Jenny uh, Snyder. They have spent a great deal of time in my office, a great deal of time doing research, bringing information back asking great questions, working with the state, working with local daycares, because we don't want to compete with them. We know that they have waiting lists there as well. And so providing this, I believe, will be helpful to not only um, our faculty and staff and provide a capstone project for a career pathway, but it's also going to help the community, I believe, and that it's going to open up those slots for other students or other kiddos within the community join the daycare so I want to thank them I also want to thank um, RCTA they were helpful with surveys they were helpful in conversations um, I believe uh, Jill I don't want to speak for you but I believe that RCTA is very much on board and supportive of the plan and see this as a benefit for the district as well and were um, quite helpful in those surveys and helping us gather information and drill down on accuracy and what we really needed to do moving forward. So thank you, Jill, as well. Uh, the, the only thing I'll, I'll uh, mention is uh, the, the layouts. They're just uh, uh, kind of a, uh, that's to kind of show the, the stuff that we have ordered uh, or we're gonna, or we're gonna order uh, for the rooms. Uh, there's two separate rooms that are gonna be there and uh, one's for the infants and then one's for the, the toddlers. Um, I set the handbook out. Uh, there were a few uh, highlighted parts in that handbook and uh, 
Mrs. Vance and Mrs. Snyder and I went through and um, cleared all of those out. There are no, no major changes to any of those. Um, we, we did this to leave the park. We were able to get 15 days and the was going to be paid um, 15 days. What was it? Five dollars would be retroactive due to the date. That's what, that's what we took out. Five dollars would be retroactive uh, to the due date, and that's on uh, number nine, part D of the handbook. Other than that, everything else has remained the same, and um, we uh, we made room for it. And um, if you have questions, I'd be happy to ask them. I don't. I, I think you guys have probably. I know you guys have discussed in study sessions this, and so you're tracking it. So I don't want to. So Jason, for clarification for the community who may be listening and again for the board, does not change the integrity of the programs that were there during the restructuring in regards to uh, the rooms for the preschool with the modules that they can go in and manipulate and have those rooms, the OT, the PT, all of those areas remain intact. Correct. Um, and then I also want to thank Jason and the Community Foundation. They are working very closely with us for, with, uh, with grant money um, to order supplies, needed equipment to launch this should um, it be board approved. So uh, I had reached out and had a meeting with Jay Albright and Brian Johnson and were very supportive uh, in this endeavor. And then Jason and Jenny did a wonderful job of helping drill down on some numbers and materials and what would be needed. That. Again, this would be open to all um, biological or adopted children of faculty and staff members. So this isn't just for teachers, it's for our employees across the district. Well, I did have a uh, person apply for a job at uh, ARB today, and, and uh, there was discussion about the daycare, and that may be a reason they applied for a position in corporation because they heard that it was going to be a possibility, and they had young kids. And they had no intentions of going back to work, but they get back into a school, and now they actually have an opportunity to do it. So I think you're going to see a lot more of that as if we you know, get a year done and things like that. So. Sounds like you're going to be up and running. Pending more. We're going to find out here in <laughs> 30 seconds. There I hope. you go. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just, thanks, Jason. You, you did a great job here getting this all put together. Kind of a big project in a short period of time. And boy, it looks great. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I can't really take any credit for, for it. You know, you, Mrs. Vance has laid the, the foundations and the, the plan with you guys and talking about it. And, and um, RCTA has been, uh, you know, um, like Mrs. Vance said, very supportive. And you know, we want to do this for our staff. And then, I mean, my wife has, has worked her butt off this summer um, with uh, helping with this. She she has experience working in a daycare down in Indianapolis, so she knows you know exactly what's needed in there, the requirements, um, and so I've relied heavily on her, and um, I just uh, I just I just do what I can. But it's, it's a team effort as always. You know. This is a, they look, I like the little Zebby. Is that going to be on the door? <laughs> we're, we're gonna, I'm going to get some shirts named. I got to check copyright first. So I don't, don't want to get us in any legal trouble. It was oh. interesting. I was with a group of superintendents and they asked about the daycare. And when they saw the little Zebby on the front, they commented that a zebra is very difficult athletically to make look mean and uh, ferocious on the field. But it was the perfect for the make daycare. Look cute. Yeah. yeah. Jenny shot down my militaristic versions of the <laughs> babies with little hard hats and yeah. rifles. She didn't have anything to do. Probably not a good idea. She, she did a good job. Well, she put that handbook together, and we've coordinated, and, and I know Mrs. Vance has told you this, but the community, you know, we've uh, collaborated with other schools that have the daycares, and they've been very helpful. Culver, in particular, had us out and actually walked us through their daycare, let us spend a couple hours with them. Um, and, and Jenny and I went. Spent time there, so um, you know it's been a it's been a good good collaborative process with lots of people. Involved. Sounds like it. Um, moving forward, uh, as you pending board approval, if as you come up with needs, would you please let us know and don't leave us out of the loop? Absolutely. We'll certainly. Uh, formula. Or no. <laughs> which which he's maybe Thank you. Can you pull some strings there? Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. We should be good to go. 
we've had any board approval, we've already got our next steps in line. We met today with some hands. We'll try to run a few things and continue to build the needs and communicate with those interested. And so, so. Great. Could you, I know we've discussed this briefly earlier, but could you talk a little bit more about staffing, what that's going to look like, and sure. also the high school students, all, all the part of that? Yeah, the uh, right now, based on the surveys, and, and we've sent multiple surveys and, and narrowed it down and actually communicated with teachers, uh, it looks like we'll need four staff members to, to staff the number of people that we've got. So um, what we're looking at is initially starting out by hiring a, a daycare director. Uh, opening that position uh, as early as tomorrow pending board approval and then what I would like to do is allow that daycare director to be involved in the hiring of those other three individuals um, I, I, want, I, I feel like they would deserve that and, and, um, and should get that opportunity so uh, once we get that daycare director in place then our plan is to open up the other three positions and then um, the high school students um, it, a lot of it depends on their schedule as to when they can work, um, but primarily it's going to be afternoons that will be available, and um, they're going to work through for their, uh, what they call it, the, yeah, the capstone project, and, um, and, and Jen has already got several kids that have expressed interest even before we I mean, really got out there that we were doing this, but interested in that, that type of, of work. So um, we'll probably, hopefully, get some more and Oscar with with you on board I know we haven't had a lot of conversations but loading the master schedule without having this in place there is the possibility is there not that um, some students may be able to switch schedules to have morning coverage <coughs> morning, um, based on schedule changes and on. this opportunity that's come about now Yes, absolutely. Once this gets approved, we can put it out there to our seniors and then Mrs. Pfeiffer and Mrs. Brown can make adjustments. So, um, and if I remember correctly, these will be classified positions. Correct. Or is it going to be IA pay or has that been yeah, the, discussed uh, on them? The director position will be um, similar to um, in the ballpark of where we, what we pay our after school directors. Um, so it's going to be more than I pay for that because it's going to have additional responsibilities and duties, but then the other would be I A pay. And the director will be hands on. So that for adults means that the director is overseeing the program, but he or she is also, also in the working. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and, and that's. Um, you know, if, if we need to change that as we go and, and see how that works, but I think it's a good model for to have one person that's you know overseeing the whole scope of the thing. I mean, there's a lot more to just being there with the kids. I mean, we've got paperwork, we've got um, you know, communication with parents, and just things like that. And having one person kind of dedicated to do that, I think, is uh, is, is a good part. Of, so having just four workers in there and just throwing them in and not having anybody kind of head down. That's our, that's our plan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you all for your input. Um, so at this time, I uh, would like to uh, hear a motion for the approval of the Rochester Community School Corporation Daycare for Corporation Employees. So moved. Second. Okay. All right. Um, all in favor? And the motion passes by the Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Go start making phone calls. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever want to come and hold babies? Oh, that might be. might have to get waivers. I'm out. That's fine. I was going to ask if you have a volunteer <laughs> list already okay, started. If, if you I'm need out. a grandma to sit in a chair and rock somebody, I'm good at that. Yeah, okay. There you go. I, I'm experienced. Okay. Um, next is the approval of the communication calendar with changes for July through December of 2022. So I believe that I captured the conversations that we had during the study session, um, just uh, shifting the visitation date to Columbia into the November month and then riddle into December, but the remaining uh, 
start times for study sessions would be at 4.30 then. Um, just to be clear, there is a typo in the November line, and so I had it down that it was the first, but then when it got moved over, it says nine. nine. I so it's both, yeah, it we're just, just first. clarifying, it's the first, first. okay. I'll go ahead and get that. Yes. Okay. Thank you, The Jamie. board meeting and everything's the first? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The study, I got you. There we go. It'll be on the first. Yeah. Running our board meeting at 9 a.m. on the first? For the walkthrough. Oh, right. Okay. It would be a study, study session. session. That's, sorry. No. I spent too much time in the sun today. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions or concerns about that calendar? Um, the board meeting in October, that's not, that's fall, was fall break over then? It's on the 17th. When is our fall break? Yeah. It, it didn't move up early? Yeah. So the fourth for the study session will be right before fall break starts, and the 17th will be the first day we're back. Any other questions from the board? That's good. Any questions from the gallery? They don't care when we meet, do they? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so a motion, could I have a motion to um, approve the, uh, sorry. A, a motion to approve the communication calendar with changes for July through December. So moved. All in favor? Again, it passes. I can see that you guys are very agreeable this evening. All right. Moving on. Until we get to the laminator. <laughs> to the laminator. Man, you gotta love a good, good laminator. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta love a good laminator. gotta love a good laminator. Appro approval to dispose of broken laminator and an outdated smart response system at Riddle Elementary. I am, man, I spent so many days fighting with a laminator. I mean, really, the, was it the big real one? The, those are terrible. Okay, um, so anybody uh, have any comments about wanting to get rid of the broken laminator and the outdated smart, smart response system? What is a smart response system? It's got I think it's a, like a, it used to be a communication thing where the teacher could put in a program and the kids would be able to answer with an ABC. Oh, okay. And it's all done with iPads now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. They're so, a little a lot slower, too. They look like little blue eggs, I yeah. think. I love you. It's all right. You touch for it. Mm -hmm. So where do, you, where do you dispose of them? You just Recycle. Trash them? Huh? Recycle. All right. Just checking. If I got to go dumpster diving, I'll check it out. <laughs> <laughs> On the country, they find a gravel road and throw it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. Do I, uh, could I please have a motion to approve the disposal of the broken laminator and the outdated smart response system at Real Elementary? So moved. Casey? I'll second. And Jim. All in favor? Motion passes 5 to 0. Okay. And. Uh, Approval to dispose of old TV brackets and televisions at Rochester Middle School. Are those the ones that were still in the car? No, okay. they are like mounted in the corners. Like the big old box TVs. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Any questions about that? Anybody? I'll entertain a motion to approve disposal of the TV brackets and televisions at Rochester Middle School. So moved. Second. And Kyle, all in favor. Five to zero. You can't even give those TVs away anymore, can you? Should have put them on your, in your, uh, what's that? Your PBIS room is giveaways. Okay, some kids want that. We can't give them away. Okay. All right. And approval of the meal price increases presented by Kathy Wilkinson for the upcoming 2022-2023 school year. So 
So Kathy elected to turn this over to Wendy, and I know that the board has not approved her yet. So I will try to lead through, and we'll probably be looking at Wendy to nod her head or, or not. I do want to preface this by saying that um, I have spoken now twice to Senator Todd Young's office, and um, they they continue to remind me that they have that this does not the free lunch program for all students does not expire until the end of June. The rollover is July first. They assured me that they are. Um, receiving a lot of phone calls in regards to the concerns with the cost of inflation, rising cost of gas, the food supply chain, all of those types of things, and that they are strongly uh, looking into that. So as superintendents, we are still in communication. Um, we are doing this preemptively in case of, but um, my last conversation with Senator Young's office was very promising. So I'm hoping that at the next board meeting, we will be talking about this in a much different capacity. Um, but I do believe, uh, to be fair to parents, that they need to understand that the possibility does exist that they will move forward with this. Um, so the recommended food prices, and there's a formula that the schools go through. Um, you can see those listed there. Elementary breakfast would be a dollar seventy. Lunch at two sixty five. Breakfast would be a dollar eighty, lunch at two seventy five. Comparative prices pre COVID, I have those for you, and I want to thank Wendy for helping me with that. Um, in 2019-2020, um, elementary was at a um, dollar ninety for breakfast. Lunch was at two dollars. At the secondary, um, it was two thirty. 240 and then adults were uh, it went from three dollars to three dollars and ten cents by understanding this adult prices remain the same adults went up uh, here oh, oh 15 cents well she did the adult <coughs> increase in 2019 right so okay. that would have been the approved price yes, so it, the adult went to 460 for lunch from 310 breakfast to two fifty from a dollar seventy five. Right. But those were approved back in eighteen nineteen, yep. yeah. And they're not gonna have any increase for this year for right. all. Thank you. Uh, no, I have not I'm, I'm sorry, maybe for the adult. Yeah, say the nineteen and twenty breakfast and lunch for elementary and I'm sorry. The increases like what it was in nineteen and twenty. So for 19 and 20, correct me so I can read the email, after completing the PL tool for the state, so this was on July 11th of 2019, a price increase of 10 cents is needed for all paid lunches. The increase would be elementary from $1.90 to $2. For breakfast or for lunch? Lunch. Okay. Secondary from 2.30 to 2.40. And adults from three dollars to three ten. Also, an increase of fifteen cents for adult breakfast is needed. Breakfast would go from a dollar sixty to a dollar seventy five. So we are not sure what the breakfast prices were prior to this. They were a dollar thirty prior to that because she didn't. She asked for a lunch increase, not a breakfast at that time. Okay. But the, she, they're uh, they're asking for an element for a uh, breakfast increase this time. It would be a forty cent increase from uh, the last time she asked for it. Okay, for both elementary and secondary. That that's. Uh, it says yeah. Breakfast that's for your elementary. Uh, secondary was the sorry below. It would be a dollar eighty for secondary. And that's forty cents more than it was. Yes, because they were both setting at a dollar thirty. Okay. So I called and asked for clarification from Kathy, and that's secondary would be fifty cents more. Elementary would be forty. Gotcha. If they were both at a dollar thirty, correct? Breakfast for elementary, she has listed as a dollar seventy, and for uh, elementary and for um, secondary, she has a dollar eighty. She told me they were setting at a dollar thirty both. Yeah, so it'd be fifty cents. Okay. Yeah. Questions? Casey, look 
Okay. I get 50 cent increase. I'm good. <laughs> it's been a long day. Any other questions from anyone? <coughs> okay. Well, let's let's pray that uh, Senator Young comes through. My last conversation was quite promising. Good. I just hate to see it happen. It's such a rough, rough time right now. So. I agree. All right. I will accept a, a motion to approve the uh, lunch, lunch, breakfast, and lunch prices for our students. For the 2020 school year. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Motion carries. And approval of the purchase of purchases from the NSLP contract and ESC agreement. So all of this comes out of at the top you can see it's NIESC and so that is the Northern Indiana Educational Service Center and um, it is uh, it helps us with buying power from collaborative schools. We do it um, secretaries and principals are very familiar with SpinBridge um, for school materials, school supplies. The same thing happens um, with food service. They all go together. Schools who are interested in specific uh, brands of milk, bread, those types of things, they all collaborate. They, they actually do the bidding process for us so that we're in compliance with the bidding process. NIESC, um, I serve on the board for, for that group and they are growing. They are picking up a lot of larger schools within the north um, western part of the state and that increases our buying power, um, bargaining power on the food service line. So what you, we are already part of NIESE. It's the understanding that we are allowing them to continue to bid out those food service prices for us um, on our behalf so that we stay in compliance there but also acknowledging that we are growing and listing those schools that are all now part of NIESC um, with the, with the, we have the new members listed there so that you can see who they are. And um, it is growing rapidly, but that is a good thing for us because it helps us ensure better buying power. Any questions or concerns? Community? And I do apologize, this wasn't at the study session. The timing of this coming in um, was beyond study session time and before this, but as you can see, um, it's effective July, July 1st, and we most certainly want to be part of that collaborative group to go out and to um, have access to the buying power of food in larger, larger groups. Absolutely. Okay. If there are no questions, I will entertain a motion to approve the purchases from the NSLP contract and the ESC agreement. So moved. Second. Jenny and Tom. All in favor? Motion carries by the zero. Eyes look for a And uh, next, uh, under information, we have the following. Uh, Policies. This is the first <coughs> reading of these policies. Uh, policy 2,221, policy 2,600, policy 5,111, policy 5,340, policy 5,460, policy 27, or excuse me, 2,370.02, policy 8,330. Policy 6110, Policy 5511, Policy 6114, Policy 0167.3, and Policy 6325. It was 5340.01. You just said 5340. 5340.01. Thank you. I stand corrected. Oh, that's what I get for thinking. Okay. Um, these are all technical changes or wording changes. Um, these are the quick and easy ones. We decided to save the uh, more um, in-depth ones for uh, another time uh, because we had so many in front of us and so much going on at this point. So um, uh, basically it was change this word to this word and it didn't change the meaning of the policy whatsoever. Any questions? 
And I'll make sure that I work with, after the first reading, I work with um, Scott and Sabrina. We'll make sure that we load those onto our website for access for everybody to scan through and look at. But again, they are, just as Katie said, technical changes. There we go. All right. If there are no questions, I will entertain a motion. Oh, we don't have to move on. Never mind. We just have information. We'll, we'll move on that in a couple months. All right. Next, we have the personnel report. I might go pull this up because it changes change quickly. All right. Uh, the June 21st, 2022 personnel report. Recommendations. Allison Schaefer. Schaffner? Schaefer. Schaffner. Schaffner. Columbia Instructional Assistant Special Needs Hourly Rate of $12.59. Stephanie Jones, Columbia Instructional Assistant Special Needs Hourly Rate $12.59. Rasma Melton, Special Education Teacher, Real Elementary School, Salary $41,150 per year. Brooke Montgomery, Second Grade Teacher, Riddle Elementary, Salary $41,150 per year. Wendy Boyer, Food Service Director, RCSC, salary $43,120 per year. Summer intercession at Rochester <coughs> Middle School. Eric Davis, teacher at his hourly rate. Emily Brown, instructional assistant at her hourly rate. Rochester Middle School, CIA coaches for 2022-2023 and 2023-2024 school years. Joe Clark, fifth grade general teacher, stipend $1,800 per year. Eric Davis, sixth grade math teacher, stipend $1,800 per year. Abby Hattishell, seventh grade science teacher, stipend $1,800 per year. Tristan Wilson, fifth through seventh grade elective teacher, stipend $1,800 per year. Nate Basham, sixth through seventh grade English teacher, stipend $1,800 per year. We have the following resignations. Sally Dunwoody, RMS High Ability Coordinator, effective end of 2021-2022 school year. Paige Schaefer, Special Needs Instructional Assistant, Columbia Elementary, effective July 22nd, 2022. Linda Arnett, Special Needs Riddle Elementary, effective end of 2021-2022 school year. Brittany Piercy, third grade teacher, Riddle Elementary, effective June 14th, 2022. J.C. Denton, Special Needs Instructional Assistant, Columbia Elementary, effective May 27, 2022. Kathy Hunt, Transportation Bus Driver Assistant, effective June 3, 2022. Laura Calvert, Columbia Elementary Food Service, effective July 1, 2022. Athletic, resin, excuse me, athletic Recommendations, RMS. Samantha Wally, Volunteer Cheer Coach. Michelle Yeager, volunteer cheer coach. Samantha Wally, sixth grade volleyball coach, stipend $1,145. Linnea Strasser, co seventh grade volleyball coach, stipend $1,035. Rebecca Bollinger, co seventh grade volleyball coach, stipend $1,035. Stacy Wilson, eighth grade volleyball coach, stipend $2,175. Athletic recommendations, at the high school. Eric Backus, head coach for varsity boys soccer, stipend $4,250. Athletic resignations, Rebecca Lee, Lady Zebra's softball coach. Retirement, Lisa McMillan, Rochester High School choir director. Charlie Schwank, effective July 19, 2022, elementary PE. FMLA, Don Mayer, uh, <coughs> April 21, 2022, to May 23rd, 2022. Any questions or concerns? I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, personnel report as presented. Okay. All in favor? Motion carries five to zero. If I may, I'd like to introduce Wendy Bauer. Um, <coughs> Wendy, if you want to stand up for just a moment and share just a little bit about yourself and how long you've been with the district. And Did I call her? I knew a Wendy Boyer. Sorry. <laughs> Bauer. <laughs> okay. um, I started as a sub in 2008. 
I uh, thought I was only going to work like three hours a day because I had two hour or two other jobs. Somehow it ended up being eight hours a day within probably a couple months. So um, I've done food service pretty much my whole life. My first job was Hardy's of Rochester here in town at 15. By the time I was graduating high school, I was already doing bank deposits, scheduling. So it's pretty much been in my blood my whole life. Um, I started out as uh, running the a la carte line here, and then as each new manager came in, I kind of became a, a secondary there that was actually supposed to be there. So I was able to pick up stuff very, very quickly. This is my husband, Doug. Um, I graduated from Rochester in 88. And uh, 2020, I went and got my associate's degree. So I do have a degree in business administration. And at the time I was in my speech class, I was the oldest person giving speeches and my kids both started college at the same time so they had all three of us sitting there so that was a, a neat experience when everybody started clicking that all three of you are related to each other and I generally would get up first for speaking because everybody was so scared and I was scared of public speaking but it was like if I get up there then everybody else is going to fall behind me it's going to be easier for everybody so it was a, a fun experience going back that late in life to get that degree. So I want to welcome you. You've done a terrific job. And, and one thing that um, Rochester Schools firmly believes in and we've talked about before is Kathy Wilkinson did a really nice job of understanding our desire to grow leaders internally. And Ruby is an example of that and has taken over the summer food program and it's one <coughs> running well and effectively. So just want to thank the board for their support, but Wendy for taking that on and being willing to run that department. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And we have the superintendent's report. So I'd like to begin um, by having the principal share out. Share out. I think everybody um, assumes that when we're not in school, we're not busy. And it's actually one of the busiest times of the year. And so we'll begin with Jason, things that you're working on. Um, I've actually taken the last three weeks off. And, uh, <laughs> been kind of things behind the scenes and things you need help with. No, um, we've uh, got a lot going on uh, during the summertime, obviously with the daycare piece. That's something we've been working on. But uh, aside from that, we've got Title I grants that involve um, in the neighborhood of $400,000 to $500,000. Um, and June is a real uh, busy time for that. It requires a lot of uh, coordination with other entities, Head Start, non-public schools, um, all of the other title of, uh, directors in the corporation. So uh, I've been working on that, I'm working with the uh, uh, Community Foundation on that grant, trying to get some money for the daycare to help offset some costs. Um, our meeting plans uh, are due uh, to the state. Every elementary school has to have a reading plan that um, is submitted to the state and approved by the state. So uh, I've been working on that and uh, we're in good shape in all of those areas. Hiring has been uh, something we've, we've been working on and uh, as with this personnel report that you saw, um, we had several um, special needs IAs depart, but we've, um, after today, I've uh, been able to fill all of those positions up at this point. So um, the only things that we need right now are just uh, the, um, the post our positions for the daycare and um, continue to work uh, to get that kind of stuff going. Uh, we just set a date for an open house uh, coming up and uh, we're doing, doing well, we're rolling along. Our summer uh, reading program is going fantastic. Megan McLaughlin's uh, been directing that. She's got a couple of teachers in there working and every Monday and Wednesday, I love having the kids come in and they get, a, they get in the gym and they have guest readers and stuff and it's been really nice to just see some of those kids. We've got some speech going on. Uh, Alicia helps with doing that. So we got kids coming in in the mornings for that too. And, and uh, that's always fun because a lot of them stop by my office and uh, it's just it's just nice, you know, to see that. And uh, so we've been doing doing that. And then we'll have intercession coming up in July. So um, still a lot going on. Our food service continues to uh, provide the free meals out of Columbia. And they're, they're rolling with that as well. Any questions for Jason? Are you going to get any break this summer? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. We'll figure that out. Uh, for Luke, um, I, he asked me to just share with you that uh, they're working on uh, filling a special ed position right now, and uh, that's going, um, or in the process of doing that. Uh, 
I read summer school went really well, and he wanted to, me to thank Amy Freeman, Joanna Johnson, and Mary Miller um, because uh, they uh, they headed up that I read summer program, and that's something that you know they they're required to to offer and, and do. And I know that uh, the kids do really well uh, and get a lot from that, so that's been good. Uh, and a shout out to those working on the painting and um, the other things in the building. They got some people working in the building helping out, getting some stuff done. So. He doesn't have any other needs, and that's all I got to report. Thank you. Thank you. Cassie? We are doing a lot of the cleaning, and the crews are doing an amazing job um, between our custodial crew and our hourly crew. They're going through room by room, uh, space by space, cleaning, painting, making things look nice, taking down old TVs. Like <laughs> And then we've got a parking lot going on. So we've got a lot of what I would call beautification efforts happening during this off time. Um, Luke is nice spending time looking at data, uh, what things have worked uh, the past year, what things we want to tweak and work on. Um, currently, fully staffed, have um, some tweaks maybe in the, and you know, who's teaching what, what period, which is normal every summer for what works. Um, so that's what we're working on, working on intercession still working on um, what will be the open house and the going to see how you go to get first day plan and all this um, so that's what we have going on behind the scenes, lots of that stuff. And we don't need anything but uh, patience and continued support, which we appreciate. Any questions for Tessa? <coughs> Oscar? Yeah, we currently uh, have summer school going on. We wrap that up this Thursday. Uh, we've got several kids there for health and PE and uh, language arts with Mr. Health and uh, Mr. Swank and Mr. Davis. They've done a great job. Our summer athletics, our weights program, and all the off-season workouts are going on. Our football program is currently at a camp and wrestling's going next week. I know the basketball team's been playing quite a bit as well. I don't want to leave any of them out, but they're doing a lot of stuff there. Uh, the last two days, and then one day last week, we moved Joel Lau's program, Ryan Sears' programs from the high school over to the learning center. We're still in the process of doing that. Uh, Gerald, our new uh, head of maintenance, is doing a great job heading that up. So we appreciate that. Um, we used a rigging company to move the CNC machines, which uh, that was an interesting process to watch how they did that. Mr. Lau and I said we'd have done it a lot different. And uh, the machines were a lot safer because we hired somebody to do it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> in the process of uh, looking for a vocal director, we've had two interviews, and then we got two more this Friday, and hopefully we can uh, select that. The best candidate there is just awesome that we had four qualified people who applied for that position. Um, I do want to thank the board. Uh, I do know for a fact I have two teachers who were offered jobs, maybe making more money, but they are actually going to stay because they are going to be able to utilize our daycare. Um, since it got approved tonight, so I don't have to find a Spanish or a language arts teacher now because of your tremendous support to the corporation and helping them out. Uh, we're really excited for Kistler to get the Harmony rollover going so we can get registration <laughs> rolling here in the next couple weeks. I also want to thank Mrs. Vance and the board for all the IAs that have been working at their hourly rate. We painted all of our locker rooms. If you, once we get the parking lot going, you drive by the football field, you will not miss our goalposts as they've been painted. Uh, got a nice fresh coat of paint on them by Mr. Seeger, and they look tremendous as well. And uh, we're currently working on a huge <laughs> framing project that could make uh, RMS and RHS in the parking lot look pretty cool if uh, we get the framing in there. So that's what we have going on in the high school. I said nothing, just what kind of what, what kind of a, we missed I think an important part of that Oscar. We got an important what? Um, that was brilliant. We're working on trying to get some branding stuff done branding. for the like athletic entrances and things like that. We're really close to you know pull the trigger on that. So it'll really make the schools pop as far as uh, doing that. I know Mrs. Murphy and Mrs. Atkins have been working real hard on that. I love how quickly he skimmed over that. He was like, you know, IAs and moving it, it's great. And oh, by the way, we're going to brand it. And oh, no, we did this. And, any other questions? <laughs> do you want to? Do you want to go any deeper into that, Mr. Haas? No, I just don't. 
No pressure there. Todd and I are not feeling any pressure whatsoever on that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> any questions for Oscar? No, but if you're going to do that, can you include the back side of the scoreboard on the football field? Because <laughs> when you drive down the road, you're like, wow, that's ugly. <laughs> Sorry. That falls Denise under A.D. Reaney. I'll make sure he's aware. <laughs> Casey can be pain or what's on it? It's nothing. It's just blank. It's oh, just, it's yeah, you see the, side. like, you can see the, like the bracket separate boards, you oh. know, and how, and, I just, I don't know, it was months ago, but I drove past and I thought, wow, that would be an awesome area for a, I don't know, zebra mural or something. I mean, just one complete exposure right there. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a exposed. Sure, we can add that to our branding. There you go, add that to the branding. It would be like a welcome, you know. Thank you, Cassie. <laughs> How you doing over there, Todd? <laughs> Are you sweating yet? Sounds like you're killing it. <laughs> That's calculator. No, put the toys back. <laughs> we did, oh, yes, we did. I'm I mean, sorry. what do you mean you forgot? <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta just, you know, guys, poke me in the right place to get that stuff with the memoirs. Okay, <laughs> we did talk about, um, Casey and I talked about this, and uh, I, did you throw it by Jana? I did, yeah, and I just want to throw it out to the board. Well, um, with so much going on with personnel <coughs> at this time of year, um, we thought that perhaps it would be a good idea that at either the beginning or the end of every study session, if we had a 15 minute regular board meeting just to approve personnel so we could get people in the buildings and, and uh, approved so they know where they're going and, and get that done rather than having to wait till late July if we could get that done at a study session the first part of the month might be a little easier and the same thing in August if we've got people in buildings you know as quickly as possible. And if it works well I mean and we want to do it maybe do it all year long but I mean if you see some of the dates on the personnel report even today I mean I think one was May 23rd I don't remember if that was a resignation or if it was a new hire, but either way, I mean, when someone resigns, I'm sure the admin would like to see that approved as soon as possible so that while they're doing their interviews, you know, they know, yes, this position is definitively open. And well, sometimes you have to wait for more approval of the resignation right, before you yeah. can move on. You know, that's been a common practice of ours, but yes, that's important. I mean, look, you might not remember, but we did that all throughout last summer, too. Okay. Add that to it. I think that's what they, for exactly the reason that you say it's important to approve those so that they can have finality. Yep. I don't know, have anything else. The the parking lot. We had our parking lot meeting this morning, and it's going very well. And um, they are still on target and on track. And um, I think Cassie commented, and I know that I've had comments that it already looks so much better. And then we get to tell them it's not even finished yet. It's, they're still uh, hauling in stone and, and uh, working with us in regards to that. But I can't say enough about ENB and their communication and the regularity of the meetings and staying on track and keeping us in the loop. So it's going well. Good. Any questions or comments from anyone on anything? Well, uh, at, at this point, do I have to have a motion to adjourn or do we just adjourn? I think all in favor, okay, we're going to adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Without objection. <laughs>